this is, this is, this is. Welcome to a new episode, uh, my Bobs and Bobettes. How are you doing? Um, feeling good here on the My Career Podcast. Um, MXPX, that's, we got a lot going on. I'll just start with, in case you didn't know, MXPX has a new album out. It's called Find A Way Home. It's available everywhere you find music. Um, if you don't subscribe to like Spotify or Apple Music or something like that, you can check it out for free on the MXPX YouTube. Um, and we have been releasing videos every single week until we don't have a video to release. Um, and that means this week, if you haven't already seen it, um, we are going to be releasing Mountains to Climb. That's right. That's what we're releasing. Mountains to Climb. Go check it out. Go subscribe to the MXPX YouTube channel. Uh, that would help us out a lot. A lot of people ask, like, how can I help the, the podcast? Um, sorry, I'm squatting flies. Um, <laughs> how can I help the podcast? Go to mxpx.com, uh, subscribe to our socials, anything like that. Um, be, be part of it. Be part of our gang. Be part of our family. Uh, we have a new album out called Find a Way Home. It's available everywhere. Um, you, can, you can get the vinyl at mxpx.com. You can get merch at mxpx.com. And, <clears throat> of course, uh, you know, we're doing some shows. We're going to be in Vegas coming up October 21 and 22. Uh, at when we were young fest going to be amazing. Um, I will be playing with Goldfinger unless there's some reason I can't do both, you know? Um, so I'll be doing, uh, four shows in two days. It'll be great. Um, the next weekend, uh, we are heading to Indonesia. That's right. We just announced that last week. Uh, amazing fun times. We can't wait to go back. Uh, we love Indonesia. It's one of the best places to play. We uh, we encourage any of our, our friends to, to go out there and play. Um, this was a very last-minute thing, and it, th these things kind of do come together pretty last minute in, 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 in Indonesia. But uh, this was very, this is like the most last-minute we've done. Uh, but yeah, we're heading back. We're going to be in Bali on the 27th, and then in Jakarta the 28th, and then the 29th in uh, Sakarat, what is um, Sarakata, I think I'm not. I'm not exactly sure how to say that last city. I'm sorry if I messed it up. But uh, come see us. MXPX going to be there. Tom, Tom, and and you're here. Looking forward to that 16 hour flight. Uh, and then we're not even there yet. But um, we're we're heading to Bali first. And Belly, sorry, I'm trying to like pronounce it right. I uh, heard it wasn't Bali. It was Belly. It's uh, the next. It's kind of like when when we go to Mexico. I say, would you like a taco? Uh, or, or <laughs> all right, you guys, uh, I'm silly today. It's, uh, it's been, uh, a really beautiful day. It's like one of the nicest days in October. Um, it's beautiful. Anyway, let's get to it. So before, let me just, let me just finish this out. I know I'm butchering this whole like concert calendar, but, uh, after Indonesia, um, I think Goldfinger has some shows. I'm not really sure what the dates are, so you're going to have to figure that out yourself. Um, but MXPX is going to be in Seattle, December 30th, closing out the year. And we're really excited to do that. That's kind of like kick off our full headlining sets. I know we've been headlining a lot of festivals, but festivals are generally slightly less time than a full, full headlining club set. Because in a club, you can pretty much do whatever you want, like full, you know, hour, 20 minutes, hour, half, whatever you want. But, um, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to being at the show box. Diesel boy is going to be with us. And those guys have been playing some shows lately. They have a new album out. Check them out. Uh, the tickets are almost sold out. I heard they were, the, we're fighting the bots to, to be honest, we're fighting the bots on this Seattle show. Um, when it gets close to selling out, bots get some sort of notification they start buying tickets so we're putting putting tickets back in there to make sure that you guys the the, the actual people that want to go can get get tickets at the actual price so thank you for your support thanks for buying tickets uh just straight away from us uh right at right at the beginning because it just makes it so much simpler um january 6th we're going to be at uh, in hollywood at the hollywood palladium um, January 6th, celebrate it. Let's go. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, but anyway, so January 6th at the Hollywood Palladium, MXPX, Less Than Jake, Reliant K, and Smoking Popes. It's going to be an epic adventure of a night. 
It's going to be like a, a, everybody's going to have solid sets. Everybody's going to have a good time. Everybody's going to be interacting with each other. Um, it's it's definitely it's it's our own version of of a festival without saying it's a festival. Because I mean, to be honest, usually we, these days we have one or two support bands. So having three support bands, having an opener and two support. Uh, it, to, to me, it feels like a festival. It feels like we, we just, we're doing a mini fest at the Hollywood Palladium. So come on down. Don't wait for tickets. It's been selling. It will sell. And I think, uh, I think this is the show you don't want to miss. If you've been a fan of MXPX, this is the one. I'd appreciate it. And uh, we got to pay less than Jake a lot of money for this show. So buy tickets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, more to come, of course, like I said, if you're international, if you're in the U.S., in, on the East Coast, on the, on the, you know, somewhere else other than California, stay tuned, stay tuned, you won't have to wait long, but, um, and more will come. All right, let's get to it, mxpeaks.com, thank you so much for your support, everyone, um, you Bobs and Bobettes, you know who you are. Um, <laughs> let's get to some voicemails. Let's just do a bunch of voicemails and, uh, we'll get into some, some fun stuff and we'll talk about music. We'll talk, I don't know what we'll talk about. I haven't actually, I don't know what these voicemails are about. I assume some will be about the new album. Some will be about older stuff and songwriting and, and whatever and shows. So, but maybe we're going to get something completely completely off the cuff, completely out of left field. I don't know. We can only dream about it, right? Let's uh let's check out the first one. Here we go. Hey Mike, this is William from Birmingham, Alabama. I appreciate you answering my call on the last episode. Uh I promise not to make a habit of uh calling you all the time. <laughs> That's my second message to you. I'll make them far and few between, but I just had a call again because I was uh, I was thinking about man, what's my favorite song on the new album? And it's hard for me to pick one. I think it changes from day to day. Um, but I will say the song "This Is What You Told Me" on my first listen through. I don't know why I didn't care for it at first. I, I think it's just one of those songs I needed to take a little bit more time to digest, but. Um, I think recently it's become one of my very favorites. Um, and I think partially that's due to the lyrics. Um, I'm pushing 30 <laughs> and <laughs> made the, I don't know, maybe foolish decision to go back to school and get a graduate degree. And, um, man, I don't, I don't feel like that I shine under pressure. Um, there's there's a lot of days where the pressure of school is really getting to me and it's it's real difficult and I can get real anxious and wonder what I'm doing and <laughs> you know kind of feel that guilt sometimes of oh maybe maybe it would have been better for me to stay in the workforce for the sake of my wife I I don't know but um yeah but that that song has become really a pick me up on my commute to uh to campus especially at the end when it says you shine under pressure. I just, with all the time that I've had to spend uh, kind of away from friends and family doing this, I don't have a lot of time for, uh, to spend a lot, to spend with those people who, um, you know, can say those kind of things to me on a daily basis. So just kind of to hear that positive message and, you know, gr grinding through the helter skelter and, um, it's just a good pick me up. I appreciate it. And I wonder if, uh, I wonder if that was inspired by somebody in your life, um, who told you those things, perhaps it's your wife. I don't know. So anyway, uh, I love the song now. I love the guitar at the beginning, especially. Uh, so yeah, just wanted to share my two cents about that. Have a good one, Mike. Thanks, William. I appreciate the call. Um, that's wild, man. You didn't like it at first, and now, now it's one of your favorites. I wonder how that happens. I think, I think modern music has kind of screwed that up. And and I do love a lot of modern music. Don't get me wrong. Um, but maybe it makes peaks has always been like that. We've kind of had these hooks that aren't apparent at first. Let me get to the, just the lyrics. You know, your question was: Is there some? You know, people inspire me 
your question was, was the song written because someone inspired me to write it? Yeah, the the, the honest answer is yes. Uh, multiple people. Um, I think, as with anything, um, when you have partners that that tell you to push through, that's better than than someone that's telling you you suck. Um, so, I would say my wife won. My wife is is very uh, supportive and will tell me I'm stupid when I'm stupid, but she will, when I need encouragement, she, she'll give me that. Um, and I would say also Tom Chichilla, um, business partner, management, management guy. Uh, he is great at, at inspiring confidence and also tearing you down same way. It's kind of, it's like, it's like a work wife kind of thing, but, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, those, those people like, there's, there's a lot of people like that. I would say, um, somebody more recent and, and obviously from my past, but, um, working with Darren Doan on a lot of these videos, he's been, he's directed all the, a lot of the videos, um, that we've put out recently. And he, uh, just his work ethic and his, uh, business mind and the way he sees the world is a lot different than, than the way most people see the world. And I, that, that's inspiring because MXPX has always been, we've always been, a you know, a redheaded stepchild. Like I was a little off, like a black sheep, you know, um, we've always done our own thing when it comes to music, when it comes to, um, not just music, but the music business. Like, I'm not saying we are doing weird music. I mean, we're, we have very straightforward music, but, um, the way we, do business um, is different than a lot the lo a lot of other bands and a lot of other bigger companies and things like that. Um, but you know, it's like we we try to overpay people that we work with, things like that. Like we pay we pay off record labels when we owe them money. We pay them more than they're owed. You know, just so that it's easier. You know what I mean? So it's like things like that. Like uh, we just. We're just trying to like breed positivity in this business world that's so sick and so demented in in so many ways. And the entertainment business is a very unhealthy place when it comes to how a lot of the the talent is treated and how a lot of just the everyday workers are treated. And but but it's not it's not it's not how they're treated or paid. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is is how an artist is seen as literally just just a paycheck and like with agents things like that and so like it's just such a dark world that uh, mxpx really tries um to engineer positivity in a world that is so negative and and i feel like that's something that we've always had an underlying vibe of but it's just gotten better and it's gotten more prevalent over the years. And we've had darker albums, say like Panic or something like that. But, but overall, I feel like we've been trending upwards into a, a positive direction. But I always say Tomorrow's Another Day from Slowly Going the Way of the Buffalo was a great example of an MXPX song. And then, you know, so like if you see, you know, what's an MXPX song? Uh, Tomorrow's Another Day. You know, that sounds like MXPX. But we have so many songs that don't sound like that, right? Secret Weapon. What does that sound like? That sounds like an MXPX song. But it's not, it doesn't sound like Tomorrow's Another Day. So like uh, from the new album, Mountains to Climb, that sounds like MXPX. And I would say this song, we're talking about This Is What You Told Me. By the way, the original title was You Shine Under Pressure, <laughs> but uh, it was just too on the nose. So uh, changed it. Um, that song is very MXPX, I feel like, but at the same time has weird elements that are like, okay, that's new. That's kind of cool. You know, new as in new from us, like new us playing that kind of vibe. So this dissonant chord progression on the on the verse, uh, I like it. Um but just to tie this in a knot, put a bow on this this idea, um, the idea behind the song is purely to get yourself motivated when you listen to it without 
trying to tell yourself that like like it is a, a it is self motivating but it's coming from a perspective of being told by your friend, being told by a mentor, being told by a coach, being told by a teacher, being told by somebody that really inspires you. And it doesn't have to be any of those. It doesn't have to be a teacher, you know, but it can be. It definitely can be. Um, a podcaster. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was inspired by this podcaster. I mean, that's what the funny thing is, is I've been inspired by podcasts time and time again. I would say uh, Tim Ferriss, some of his podcasts are really, really inspiring. And some of them are annoying because it's just like, okay, this is crazy. But um, that's the thing. It's like I never have a negative view on the annoying ones. It's just like literally like I think about what good I've gotten out of this episode of this podcast. Um, so it's crazy to me when people take one bad thing that somebody's done and then it just like negates all the good things that they've done in their life it's wild it's a wild it's a wild world we live in we're probably somewhere in the simulation world i don't know um I'd, i love talking about simulation theory and all that but i don't really you know i just talk about it i don't really know much about it um, let's get to another voicemail. All right. Thanks, William. Hey, Mike. How's it going? Um, this is Carrie from Austin, Texas, um, slash Las Vegas, uh, which is where I'm originally from, but I'm in Austin now. And um, I was just listening to your podcast this morning, so I thought I would call and driving, and hopefully this comes through okay. Um, but, yeah, I'm just so in love with the album. I've been listening to you guys forever. Um, I mean, I think you know that. I've been a fan since I was, I don't know, 12 years old. I'm 41 years old now. So um, yeah, I just love MXPX. But really, like my favorite thing about the album is just like, so how much you get us, like how much you get us as fans, how much you get us as people. I have, you know, somewhat similar life. I've got a boy and a girl. And I just love when you talk about, um, you know, we wouldn't have this her and we wouldn't have him and Vegas out on the limb and obviously that means a lot to me I'm from Vegas I got married in Vegas also um and you know just absolutely love it but the three songs um that really really resonated for me were mountains to climb and then going into sunrise and then paying it off um with that song about Holly and I'm kind of putting on the name here but um when we broke through and yeah I just love it um those three songs I listened to them when I was in LA with my mom, um, she's going through cancer treatment for stage four cancer right now. And after, you know, mountains to climb and it goes into sunrise, I was on the one freeway right next to, right next to um, the Pacific Coast Highway and just bawling my eyes out, um, no lyrics. And it just hit me so hard. And then coming out on the other side, with when we broke through and really that life that you made for yourself. It just meant so much to me. It means so much to me. I'm going to be at both shows in Vegas. I can't wait to see you guys. I hope this has been over three minutes. Um, love you to pieces, Mike. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for just getting us again. Um, you're awesome. Have a great day. Bye. Great call, Carrie. Thank you so much for calling in. That's a great picture you just painted. Um, man. Good vibes to your mom. Everybody send good vibes to Carrie's mom right now. Uh, beat that cancer. Um, you know, that's why we do this. You know, we we put a song like Sunrise on the album, not because a million people are going to listen to that. You know, I, I know it's not going to be the most popular song on the record, but like, I know it's it's important to like have a piece of music when we're putting out an album it's not just a bunch of songs thrown together. There's, it's telling a story, and I'm not saying it's a rock opera either, but there's a subtle theme, and it's about redemption. It's about loss. It's about finding a way to survive no matter what. And and then looking back when you do and, and taking the time to acknowledge that whatever it is you believe uh, helped pull you through that. Because like William was saying earlier, when you're just 
you know, you don't have somebody outside yourself telling you, hey, you can do this, you can do this. Maybe a song can be that, you know, a song can be, you know, the, the, the tapestry in our lives, you know, um, and, and the colors that we choose make a difference and, and can make a difference um, subconsciously for sure. Consciously still possible. Absolutely. I mean, we're talking about it right now. Um, those songs, those songs at the end of the record are trying to tell a story. They're trying to take you someplace and they're trying to get you to tap into your own life. You know, it's not about me. It's not about, I mean, sure. It's about me when I'm writing the song, but once, once the song hits the band, it's about everybody. It's about all of us. And, um, I appreciate you calling in and letting me know that because it's just, it's easy to get separated from that core idea, you know, that we're really all in this together. And, you know, you said you get us. I don't know if I get you guys. I just, I think, I think I, I try to be honest and I also am a conduit for what I see. So it's not like every song is all a personal dialogue of my life. It's, it's, it's me seeing the world and seeing people struggle and seeing how much anxiety is out there. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to be a conduit for that. And I try to allow myself just to like be vulnerable because I know people are going to think this and this, or this is the story of this. And it's like, well, not really. I just had an idea for a song and I wrote it or, or sometimes there is, you know, sometimes they may be right. I don't know. So I think it's important for me to continue to do good work, work that I, as long as I feel like it's good, it's good. Cause I mean, not everybody's going to like it, right? You can't please everyone. And, and I think that's true in all ways, in all walks of life. You can't please everyone. So, so, and I'm not saying you shouldn't try to please someone. <laughs> you should, but you can't please everyone. Um, and that's, that's the lesson that I keep, I need to keep learning um honesty doing what feels right but also what not just feels right what what uh what you know is right um and I, and I know that like a lot of people have like weird ideas about life and and could be technically wrong and feel like it's right I'm not really talking about that i i i think if you're a fairly you know head on your shoulders person and I'm not saying I am, but I, I somehow survive um, with a lot of help from my friends, and my family. Um, but if you if you're fairly you, if you're fairly level headed, you have that equilibrium of oh I, I know this is this is this doesn't feel right, or this situation feels this feels right, or I'm scared about going and doing this thing that I've wanted to do for a long time, it probably means I should continue and go and do it. Because some of the things that we're most scared of are so good for us. Um, I've been doing yoga last couple weeks with Tom and Thomas Nesky, and he, he's been doing it for like a year or more. And I'm literally just doing it for the hotness because it's in a hot room and you're just sweating. You're just immediately well, not immediately sweating, but after like 10, 15 minutes, you start sweating and the room's like 107 degrees. Um, and by the end of the hour, I'm just like trying not to pass out. You know, it, it's new. It's, it's it, the, the, the yoga moves aren't hard. Sometimes they're, they're uncomfortable to like hold some of the positions, but, um, but they're not hard. And, and if it wasn't for the heat, it would be very, very easy to do but the heat really that to me is a huge life lesson is the heat makes all the difference when things get hot people can't handle it and when you don't condition yourself for that heat you're gonna have problems so i'm sitting there in the on my yoga mat like almost dying trying not to pass out because I, I i got problems but at, at least i'm training this is my training and uh <sighs> I thought I was going to die last night. I was out there. It was my second time. My first time I got through the whole thing, no problem. I wouldn't say no problem, but I, I did every move. 
Last night, for some reason, I was just more tingly, way more dehydrated. I think that's literally what it was. I, my stomach was sunken in. My hands were like, were cramping up like this. They looked like uh, duck face hands. Um, I, I was seriously dehydrated and I was tingly all over. And I just was trying to catch my breath and trying not to pass out for like the last 15 minutes of the hour. It was, it was, uh, shocking how how crazy it was and i survived and it was fine like once once the the you, know, you cool down a little bit you get you come through it and guaranteed i am stronger now than i was before i went through that 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 experience so like that to me is honestly the most beneficial part of doing this yoga stuff is being in the heat you know it's going to train me for being in the heat i mean i'm already fairly good at it, but train me for being in the heat on stage, you know, because it gets hot and it gets overwhelming. It gets stifling, especially when we're in Indonesia and in Vegas, things like that. It could get really hot. So this, this is much needed for me. Um, thanks for the call, Carrie. Uh, I wish you the best. I, I, always, I know exactly who you are. I've, I've met you many times and I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for calling in and ladies, you know, last week we had, um, Jen on and she she encouraged the ladies to call in so thank you Carrie for uh, picking up that torch now next week I don't know if it's going to be a voicemail episode it could be could be we'll see uh, but there will be more so please ladies call in let me know your experiences let me know if you have any stories I, I love these personal stories they're the best anything anything uh, you know, obviously it's nice when it involves MXPX, but it doesn't have to involve MXPX. You could just tell me a, a good story. All right, let's get to the next one. Here, uh, here's another voicemail. Hey, Mike, this is Josh from Gross again. Thanks for playing us on New Music Monday. Really appreciate that. Loving all the new music that's getting played. Uh, we'll be recording some. Actually, I am recording some stuff right now, so hopefully we'll get some stuff to you in. Next couple months, I have three questions for you. So let's see what tickles your fancy. First question, what is the origin of the word poking at you? I've been wondering that for a long time. What's it mean? Where does it come from? Et cetera, et cetera. Please tell me. I can answer that. Question number two, the Vespas. What started the love affair? Mm -hmm. What ended the love affair? You had pictures of you on Vespas in the liner notes. There's lyrics about the Vespas. Please elaborate. <laughs> That's and a great question. Question number three is about Yuri's drumming. One thing I re I've always really loved about MXPX is the different tempo changes and just very quick breakneck, just, just the way Yuri drums how it changes so quickly in different tempos, different beats going on, the hi-hat going on, the going on the low tom, et cetera, et cetera. How did he learn to do that? Was that natural for him? Did he pick that up from listening to certain things? Did you help him with that? Did you have to kind of say, hey, Yuri, uh, why don't you check this or try this, do that? Very curious. So, uh, yeah, let me know about all those things or, yeah, anyways. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, all Mike. Right. <laughs> all right, Josh. Thanks, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep sending in bands. Keep sending in your, your uh, YouTube links if you want to submit to the podcast. We'll play a, a bit of your song, a little, little patch of it. Um, and uh, anyway, Josh did. So, let me check this out. Poconacha. What is the origin for Poconacha? That's an easy one. A lot of people know this. Um, there's a commercial for Snickers, Snickers candy bars. And the commercial was like, long about noon when your appetite's poking at you. Po it was like this girl on a horse, I think, or a guy on a horse. I don't remember. Um, Poking at you, poking at you. And Yuri was telling us that story of the commercial. He's like, oh, yeah, there's this commercial. It was so weird. This guy's like, poking at you, poking at you. And we're like, poking at you. That's a good name for, a, you know, an album or something. You know, like we, we, we came out with just poking at you punks, you know. 
um, and then named the album Poconaccio. So, you know, uh, kids being funny, trying to be funny. It's cheesy. Yes. Back then, you know, it was just, it was like, it was like kids nowadays saying skibbity, skibbity. You know what I mean? Except for it nowadays, skibbity is like super viral. Whereas Poconaccio was just literally Yuri and us laughing about it. So there's that. There's Poconaccio. Um, I don't think it's been really co-opted since. Uh, Vespas, what a great question. What an interesting thought because I haven't really thought about that. But we got into Vespas because on Punk Rock Show, the video, Tim Mann, a s- singer of Focused, we were staying at his his house, his apartment on in Long Beach, and we were filming some of the video in Long Beach for for punk rock show, the parts where we're on the Vespa, and we got to just like ride his Vespa down the alleyway in the back of his house, and um, that kind of started my love of Vespas. And then from there, I bought a Vespa. I was like, I want to buy a Vespa. And I wasn't part of the mod movement or anything like that, which is funny, but I just thought it would be an easy kind of a cool, like little scooter to like ride ride around town in with, with or whatever. But, um, later I got Harleys and and I moved on to Harleys, but, uh, motorcycles in general, but I still, think Vespas are cool. I just don't have a Vespa. I, I, was, I sold my Vespa to Seth Roberts. Um, people know him from Watashiwa. Uh, Eager Seas. What's his... Yeah, he's had a lot of... They've changed their band name a lot. But Watashiwa. Um, anyway, love that guy. He, he bought my Vespa. And I got a, a text or a call from him one day. And he's like, man, my Vespa got stolen in downtown San Luis, uh, Luis Obispo. Uh, California. And I'm like, oh my God, of course, of course. We're talking to a guy that he was on tour with us and we're like, whatever you do, don't leave anything you care about in our dressing room while we, we go play. We were at, we were in Me- in Guadalajara, Mexico at the time. And we get done with the show. We go back to the dressing room and Seth's like, oh man, my wallet's gone. We're just like, dude, why, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, love you, Seth. Love you, buddy. So I sold that. That's where, that's when I just stopped thinking about Vespas when I sold my Vespa to him. But the Vespa was always a little hard to keep running. It was just like a night, you know, it's like it, you'd be going down the street and then it'd be like, and it would just die. So I, I don't, any cars, like I had this dot, my first, well, I'm not going to I had a car. And it did that. It didn't do that, but it just, you wouldn't know when it would start. Like you would just turn it over and it wouldn't start. And then sometimes it would, and you just have to go jiggle the spark plugs or do some weird things. Then it would start. It's like, I can't, I can't deal with that. So I'd sell that. Like, let's get rid of that. I saw a car that I absolutely love, a Buick Skylark. I, I had one. I had a 65 Buick Skylark for years and years and years. And that is the only car I ever regret selling. And it was a great car. It wasn't immaculate. It wasn't like worth a ton of money or anything. I want to say I sold it for like $6,000 or something, you know, $5,000 like 10 years ago. Maybe more than that by now. Um, Buick Skylark, it was um, it was kind of a turquoise blue. It was like a really nice turquoise blue. But I saw a white one yesterday going down the street in my neighborhood, and it was immaculate. It was definitely older, an older model than what I had. My 65 was kind of looked like a hot ride like it was heading towards the 70s but this one looked more 50s ish like a 53 54 maybe even a 52 uh it was beautiful i i I immediately started running after it to see if i could see where it was going and i saw it turn and i was like ah okay i'm gonna look that way (laughs) so i want to go see it up close is what i'm saying so uh so yeah, uh, Vespas. That 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 was what started it, and it didn't hurt that when we were filming the video, my eventual girlfriend was hanging, and there, and she was like, "Oh my god, I love Vespas." 
So, of course, I got into Vespas. And I think that's probably why I wrote that song, Do Your Feet Hurt. I wrote Vespas into there because I was just trying to be fun and funny because I knew all these girls that, that I was trying to impress were, were listening. Um, I think that's the story. I mean, well, that's the story today. All right, let's get to the next voicemail. Oh, wait. Sorry. Before I, I almost did that. Uh, I forgot. Yuri drumming. There's a three three part question. Yuri's drumming. This definitely should be Yuri answering, and and I'll have to have Yuri on on the podcast. We'll talk drums, um, you know, with the record and all that. But if I had to guess, I would just say one. Yuri's gotten really good from just playing and playing and playing. He always had a knack for just picking up stuff fairly easily. Um, when it comes to the parts and stuff, he'll he'll usually will play. He'll come up with something that he thinks is kind of working, but he'll think about it and he'll come up with like fill ideas. Co- Excuse me. He'll come up with like little parts. Um, and then aside from that, it's Tom and I going, hey, you know, the song goes, dun, 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 dun. so why don't you do that on the drums? Dun, 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 dun. Or whatever, right? So um, I don't really have a good answer for this. Yuri's just a machine. Yuri is highly underrated as a drummer he he really really is solid he hits he hits the 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 snare drum within a quarter you could put a you could put a dime down there and he'll hit that tip right on that dime every time he's that accurate with the drums so that you know he got that from steve kravak steve kravak really really drilled him into the ground he he made him play over and over he's like all right the band and I, we're going to go out to lunch. When you, when you, we come back, we'll record you. And until then, just keep playing. Just keep practicing to this click. And so he learned to play to a click while we went to dinner. Or lunch or whatever it was. Move to Bremerton was the song. Life in general, move to Bremerton. You know, over and over and over. So that's how he learned to be so consistent. And um, everything else is just, you know, don't don't not use it. You got to keep using it or you will lose it. So keep practicing. All right. Now we're ready for the next question. Thanks, Josh. Hey, Mike. This is Cody from Houston, Texas. I'm driving my daughter Ivy to school. She asks to listen to Responsibility every single morning, followed by a punk rock show and Chick Magnet. So we just wanted to call, tell you thanks for jamming out. Love the new album. Uh, she asks all the time when y'all are going to come back to Houston. And she actually just had me order her first MXPX t-shirt. I got the, her and her little sister the Secret Weapon t-shirt so they could wear it to the, on the next show that, they, that y'all come to Houston. You want to say anything, Ivy? She's a little, she's a little shy right now, but love you guys. Bye. Hey, what's up, Cody? So hi, Ivy. Thanks for, uh, well, you didn't say hi, but hi, hi. I know you want to. And thanks for listening to our new album. Thanks for listening to all those, those, uh, of your favorite songs. I love those songs too. Responsibility is a fun one to play. We love playing it live. So when you come see us, we will do that for you. Uh, punk rock show is another one we love to do. All those songs. Chick Magnet, you know, it's the bass line. I get to play the bass, jam out a little bit. I love that. So thank you so much. Uh, I love to hear from young fans. And uh, Cody, uh, I appreciate it. You, uh, you're a good man. You're a good dad. Um, all right. We will be back in Texas. We will be back in Texas. Not ready to announce anything yet, but I know that we're planning on, on doing some stuff there. So you'll get to hear some of the new songs. We'll do it. Um, let's get to another... Another one. Here we go. Hey, what's going on, Mike? Ben Dewey here. A um, few things. First of all, big fan. Been listening to you probably since I was, well, you and the band probably since I was in sixth grade. Um, one of the first bands my parents would let me listen to of the genre. Uh, in middle school, uh, they caught me with my CD album, uh, or my CD book or whatever, full of all the different CDs I listened to. 
and they made me cut them up right in front of them. Um, bands like the Sex Pistols, Nirvana, uh, you know, Crass. I listened to some pretty intense music as a sixth grader, clearly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, they did not make me cut the MXPX record. Uh, <laughs> uh, they went through it and read the lyrics, man, and they uh, deemed it acceptable. So appreciate you putting out the early early stuff, man. That really saved me. Um, <laughs> mainly, I just wanted to wanted to be on the Voice podcast thing here. Uh, I had a really good friend, best friend, Mike Melema, who passed away a couple years ago from cancer and he was a massive MXBX fan, man. He'd listen to the podcast. He'd talk about it to me. Um, best friend, uh, we went from, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, kindergarten through high school together, played in a band, covered a lot of MXBX clearly. Um, uh, that band dissolved, uh, at the end of high school, I joined a, a band for a short time called Ace Troubleshooter. We were on Tooth and Nail Records. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to reach out to you, man, and just thank you on behalf of Mike. Thank you on behalf of my younger version and current version. Uh, still listening, still a fan. But uh, much appreciated, man. You're a good guy. People love you. Uh, keep on keeping on. Hopefully, uh, I hear this on the podcast. Uh, Mike Melema, dude, loves you, man. Up in heaven. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks for calling, Ben. Ben Dewey. Wow, Ace Troubleshooter. Okay, I I definitely remember you guys. Nice to hear from you. Um. I'm friends with Josh as well, your drummer. Uh, Mike Melema, man. Uh, rest in peace, brother. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, I hear I hear about fans passing away, and it is, it's like losing a friend. It really is. It hits you kind of like you're like, yeah. It, it, you feel like you know the people, you know, uh, a little bit. A little bit. You, you at least know, know a little bit about them. But, yeah, that that's heavy, and that's that just... You know, it motivates me to just remember we're only here for a short time. And, uh, you know, at the very least, what I can do is is try to bring people together with music. So I, I don't know that I ever set out to do that, to be honest. Like you're saying, thanks for the, the early years, not getting your MXPX CDs thrown out. Um, I mean... It's just wild. So many people have that sort of experience where their their parents didn't understand what they were trying to do, and and maybe that was a good thing. I don't know. I, I just I don't know that cutting up somebody's CDs in front of them is gonna be right. You know, is gonna like if I did that to my kid, I would feel like I'd feel like I traumatized the, them in a, in a way. You know, like anything you do like that, like my. I don't want to get too too deep, but <laughs> people that throw water, cold water on their kids and laugh about it, even when they're having a tantrum. It's just like, I hear about that. And I'm just like, oh man, that's something, something's weird about that, man. I, I just don't get it. But um, there's just so, there's just so much going on that, that when we do, when we do sit down and really think about what's important in life, it hits hard. And so thinking about your friend Mike and the fact that he was a fan, he would always tell you about the podcast. Like, I can hear it now, you know, like I, I, I do that kind of thing. And I tell my friends about other podcasts and, I, you know, whatever, you know, bands and this song. And, man, we're all together in this, in this life, in this simulation, right? We are. So thanks for being part of this, Ben. Thanks for, you know, carrying the torch. I see it, you know. Mike may probably didn't ever call in, but just the fact that he listened to the podcast 
is why you called in, you know, that, that, that led us here that led me to talk about this on the podcast. So thanks for listening. Thanks for your honesty. Honestly. I mean, you know, uh, being vulnerable, uh, and thanks everybody for listening to these new songs. Cause that's, that's me being vulnerable for sure. But like I said earlier, these songs aren't, they're not about me. They're about us. They're about all of us. They're, they're a reflection of what I see day to day out in the world, in my own life, in, in others' lives. So trying to put a positive spin on it, but, uh, it, but trying to be truthful as well. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I don't know where you're from, Ben, but, uh, come on out, come on out and see us. If you get a chance to, you know, one, one last round for Mike. All right. His name, what was his name? Mike Malima. All right. Uh, let's do one last podcast for everyone here. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thanks for subscribing to the podcast. Um, thanks for your support. That's why we do it. Appreciate it. Here, here's uh, here's one more. Hey, Mike, what's going on? It's Joe from St. Pete, Florida again. Uh, I just got done listening to the podcast on the new album uh, and catching up on that. Um, I just got the new vinyl in, the Insomnia variant, and it's a, it's a really awesome, and I got the autographed edition, so it's pretty cool. Um, just been listening to that and just, uh, really, really awesome songwriting and really, really awesome lyrics and really relating to a lot of it. And, uh, you know, I'm just looking forward to, uh, I see you guys are doing some more touring, even saw that you're going to Indonesia next year. So that's pretty awesome. Um, looking forward to seeing you guys here in Florida again and hopefully get to meet you uh, and get an autograph in person in the picture. Um, anyways, I was just calling because uh, I'm really impressed by the new album and I really am digging it and I uh, hope you guys are doing well. I know you're staying really busy. Uh, but just uh, looking forward to see what you guys do next and uh, proud of you guys and love you guys and hope you're doing well and I'll talk to you soon. Right on, right on. Thanks, Joe. St. Pete, yeah. Um, always love playing in Florida. We are we are planning, like I said, you know, stay tuned, like just wait one one day. Uh we're planning on a flu, you know, at least doing a Florida show. We'll we'll see you out there. Um, thank you so much for the kind words on the new record. New record f- called Find a Way Home. Um, it's available everywhere. Everybody already has, I feel like I'm selling things. I am selling things. I'm selling records. But, um, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. It's like you don't want to let it go because we put so much time and effort into making this album. So we want to make sure everybody knows about it. We want to make sure, oh, you you weren't paying attention when I mentioned earlier, but we have a new album out, you know, things like that. So it's... um, you know, it's just keeping keeping the the conversation going, keeping it rolling. That's um, we're gonna be. I'm gonna be doing some more podcasting. I'm gonna be doing some podcasts with. I'm gonna get some guests on too. I, I have some scheduling to do, um, but I've been I've been on deadlines on some videos that I've been making, and there's been a lot of them. So yeah, uh, you know, just going through it. It's day to day. It's like you run into new problems, new squeeze, new this that, new thing to do. Um, and I'm learning to manage that, that roller coaster and smooth it out a little bit and go, this is just part of the day. This is just part of the week. This is just part of our life. This is just what humans deal with. This is just what being in a band is like. This is what having your own small business is like. This is what being self-employed is like, you know, all of the things that, that come my way. Um, I'm getting better and better at not stressing so much, like, on the personal front, like, okay, a job that we hired some people to do didn't quite go right. I feel bad, but it's not actually my fault because I'm not doing the work. So they're having to like, spend more money to get the thing done when, you know, they would have made money, but now they've done. It's like, well, I've dealt with that plenty of times. There's plenty of tours and shows that we do that we don't make money on, but it 
leads us to make money. So it's like, okay, it's kind of worth it. So like, and then other times, like when we sell something and it, the, the product goes bad or this or that, and we just eat it, you know, and we're having to replace items for free or like the, whatever it is. Right. So like, that's a very real situation. And I don't know how I got here. <laughs> this is how I do it. But, but, um, people in Florida know that, you know, when you're, when you're walking through the swamps, you got to watch out for crocodiles. You know, you can't just be willy nilly on your, on your uh, headphones, not paying attention because you're going to get eaten. So I think at the end of the day, um, uh, be wary, but also just realize problems are going to happen. Uh, there's going to be a bump in the road and you have to figure out how to go through that bump, how to go over that bump, how to go rent, whatever it is you got to do to get through to the other side. And that's life. And that's, that's all of us. That ain't, that ain't, uh, <laughs> ain't special to me. That ain't my life. That's everyone's life. And, 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 um, I feel like we all, we're all like, I don't know. I feel like I do things so so much the hard way in life a lot of times because I feel like, well, one, if I automate this, then it's going to be cheesy or it's not going to be as good. But if I do it the hard way every time, it's going to be good. But in some ways it, it makes it, it makes it so I do less. It makes it so I, I spend more time doing less work. Um, more work really if you think about it i guess what, what i'm trying to say is i'm i'm making it hard on myself by doing more work on some of the things in my life <sighs> yeah <laughs> but like i said i'm getting through that and i'm figuring out how to ride that wave and, and make it less crazy so i'll leave you with that um i uh i encourage you guys to not only come see MXPX live, but check out the new album, of course, and call in. Call into the show. It's 360 830 6660. MXPX is going to be putting ourselves out there and putting it all on the line and investing a lot in ourselves. Um, and so, you know, when you guys respond to that, like you did with the new album, um, it really makes it all worth it. So thank you. And, and the, it ain't, it ain't over yet because we're still in the middle of it. We're still, you know, the whole tour we're going to be doing is, you know, 2024. We haven't even gotten to the album shows yet. So we're still on festival season as far as we've been doing. So, um, it's a wild ride. I'm holding on tight, doing yoga to get through, to train myself. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But um, toss it, toss it up as as hard and high as you can, and um, we may not catch it every time, but most of the time you're going to be fine. That's what I've found. Most of the time, you, just, you, you it, when you leap, you're going to be, you're going to land, not soft, but you're going to land. So, um, all right. Shout out to Bob McKnight, producer. Um, football coach, his team is undefeated. The Carolina Panthers farm team, as far as I'm concerned, um, they need some of their players because the Panthers aren't doing too great so far. Actually, I have no idea. I don't know what the record is. I'm just saying that. <laughs> All right, I'll leave you with this. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking what, what's happening with the New York Jets. Um, just the whole Aaron Rodgers injury thing injuries are so heartbreaking when you have a really good player getting injured before they can do what you what their potential is right that's what i'm saying so a lot of that all around the nfl but that's one i was just thinking about earlier today so football season is upon us look out for my social media seahawks posts and kraken seattle kraken hockey is upon us as well so it's going to be a fun sports season but I promise not to let up on the new album posts and videos. Make sure you check back MXPX YouTube every week, every Monday for a new video. All right. We're getting down to it, but we have at least a couple more. At least. All right. Peace out, everybody. Peace out. <laughs>